What we're looking at today is business body language basics. If you think about it, in business, probably what's the most important single aspect is communication. Without communication, we don't have customers, we don't have suppliers, we pretty much live in a world of our own. And when you get to communication, the largest single part of communication is body language. There are three kinds of body language that we're going to look at now. The first is intentional, the second is intentional but hidden, and the third is unintentional. First kind, as I mentioned before, is intentional. Now, the gestures, that one, the, the famous, um, I've had a microchip implanted in my little finger. It's not. Everybody knows this means call me. One universal meaning. The second category is intentional but hidden body language. This is typically when you think a person's not, not watching you, so you roll your eyes, you give whatever gesture it is to show you think they're an idiot, they're wasting your time, whatever it is, and you think you're getting away with it. Um, the gesture, which I'm very reluctant to do with certain finger pointed up where you adjust your glasses with a your finger and of course it's the certain select finger and you uh, think the person doesn't get the message or they certainly can't question you about it and you've gotten away with it. The third category is unintentional. This is where you are genuinely caught off guard. You've just been told that certain people have arrived late for this work this morning and they've been all been captured on CCTV and you're one of them and you don't want to show, give your look of horror but you really were caught off guard and your face shows what you're thinking without you intending to do that. Think about it. Often there's Fred who nobody likes. Why is it that nobody likes Fred? Fred typically uses nice words, says the right thing, but he does so with a finger pointed, or it's, uh, look, let me, and, and so on. And we're scared of Fred. Fred intimidates us because of the body language, or alternatively, Fred is always talking to us, looking down, uh, particularly taking his glasses, the old famous, putting them on the edge of his nose, and looking right down at us, or using body language to denote that we're insignificant, Fred is superior to us, so we really are a waste of his time. Fifty-five percent is what we watch from the person we speak to, not listen to them. So we actually get more communication from our eyes than our ears. Which most of us think, well hold on, what we're getting the meaning from is the words. But as we see, words, 7%. So when your significant other says to you, you never listen to me, he or she is telling the truth. We don't. People speak at the rate of about 150 to 200 words a minute. People listen at the rate of about 400 words a minute. So we fill in the gaps. That's why when you're in a meeting or you're in a lecture, look around and you'll see there's a good number of people smiling. That's because they're thinking of their holiday, what they're going to be doing this evening, whatever it is, they're filling in the gaps. As far as tone goes, there are a number of things we look at. The first is emphasis. Which words are emphasized? I'll talk about that in a sec. The second thing is pauses. Do people pause between words and we see what their norm is and how when they're speaking now, it differs from their normal way. We look at the speed of which, at which people speak. We look at the pitch of the voice and the various other things we look at. I'll give you a very simple sentence. I did not say she beat her husband. Very straightforward. All, we all know what that means. It's got one very clear meaning. But we can change the meaning by changing the emphasis. I did not say she beat her husband. I was thinking it. I didn't say it. I did not say she beat her husband. Everyone else has been saying it, not me. I did not say she beat her husband. She didn't beat him, she shot him. I did not say she beat her husband. Wasn't her husband, was someone else's husband. I did not say she beat her husband. Wasn't her husband, was her lover. And so on. 
recently I said to my wife, I'm becoming a bit of an old fart. And she said, unfortunately in her reply she emphasized the wrong word. She said, you're not becoming an old fart. I wanted her to emphasize not the wrong word, but she was probably fairly accurate as far as that goes. Pauses can be a very, very good indicator of deception. Because often people need to think before they can get the lie out. They haven't rehearsed it that well, or you ask them something but it's from a different angle, didn't quite expect that, so they now need to think. Watch the face. The face is divided in two halves. The top half is not very good in terms of disguising body language. The bottom half we're typically very good at. And I'm sure you've seen many photographs where you look at somebody and you say they're smiling but they're terribly uncomfortable. They're really not at ease in that situation. It's invariably because the bottom half of the face, big smile. Top half of the face, incredible discomfort. Whenever you look at somebody and you're trying to decide which part of the face do I believe, believe the top half because that's very, very difficult for us to manipulate intentionally. The top half gives away your true emotions. Everybody has their own unique body language and that's what you have to be attuned to. Some people, most of the time, they've got their arms folded, that's fine. But, on the other hand, if you're speaking to somebody who has always got open gestures and all of a sudden you introduce a topic and they have their arms folded, that is significant.